What's up guys, Josh with Metal Emotion. Welcome back to another video. So today we've got a very filthy looking Craftsman push mower that has no spark getting to the spark plug. The question is, is it the ignition coil or is it the grounding circuit that grounds the ignition coil? How do we know? That's what I wanna talk about today and that's what I wanna show you guys. So let's get started. All right guys, what we're looking at is a very filthy looking uh, Craftsman push mower that does not have any spark to the spark plug. Now, the first thing we need to check, how do I know it doesn't have spark to the spark plug? Use one of these spark plug testers. This is a cheap $5, $6 spark plug tester from O'Reilly's Advanced Auto, any of those kind of places. So this has just got one that lights up. It's a light bulb inside. And they've got another one that is a thread style. You can use that one as well. That one is more for strength testing the coil. This is more just telling you if, if you have fire. And that's all we're interested in right now. We're not worried about strength. We just want to know, we, do we have fire? You're going to disconnect the spark plug wire, plug it into the end of the spark plug wire and plug it onto your spark plug. Now you're going to go up and squeeze the bail handle on the handlebar and pull the string over and either hang your head over to see this or have somebody look for you. And uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, hopefully you guys can see. Okay, I'm going to pull the rope and you guys look right in here, it should light up orange if there's any spark. Okay, so as you've seen there, this did not light up. So that tells us there's not any spark getting to the spark plug. Um, you could replace the spark plug all you want, but the, the, the wire is not firing the plug. The coil is not firing. So this is what the coil looks like. And it has a ground tab that sticks off the back of it. The question is, is it this wire, this grounding circuit that is the problem, or is it actually the ignition coil? We need to separate those two to be able to figure out which one it is. And so what you're gonna have to do is figure out how to take the covers off your mower. On this Briggs & Stratton, this is a really popular one, two screws on top, take that off. You're gonna have three screws around the gas tank, little 5 16 screws. And then you're gonna have two 3 8 on the front and two 3 8 on the rear. I've already got those removed. If you wanna uh, leave the dipstick attached, I recommend that you just clean right here where the dipstick goes into the engine block, clean the dirt around it so when you take this off, the dirt doesn't fall into your oil. So we'll pull this cover off and just swing it out of the way. And there is our ignition coil. Okay, here is our ignition coil. And if you look right here, this is the whole brake system. When you squeeze the handle up on your handlebar, that moves this whole assembly. You have a brake shoe that presses against the flywheel so that this slows down, preferably within three seconds. That's kind of the standard. At the same time, it's got a tab right here that when you release the handle, that tab comes over and grounds out this wire. This black wire runs down and under around town and connects to the ignition module. I call it ignition module, it's ignition coil. Connects to this coil uh, right under here where my finger is. So is it this problem or is it this problem? The easiest way is to disconnect it right here from the coil. So we're gonna reach in underneath. There's a plastic tab, just like so. There it is. And it's now disconnected. Now there is nothing else other than some magnets which you can test right here. Magnets have plenty of strength to them. So the magnets are not gonna be the problem. In 20 years of me doing this, I've never had to replace the flywheel because of the magnets. So the magnets rarely go bad. Say it was the, uh, the flywheel key was sheared. That's still not gonna affect the coil because the flywheel is still rotating and it's still generating spark in the coil. It's just not in correct time with the engine. So the timing is out, but it's still producing a spark. So now that this is disconnected, what we want to do is take the spark plug out. You do not want to try this test with the spark plug in because this is the only way to shut the engine off. And with this disconnected, there is no way to shut the engine off. So take the spark plug out and we're going to take our test light. And because we were connecting it to the spark plug, we're just going to take a little uh, jumper wire. These are just super cheap wires. You can get them at Harbor Freight or even at... Um, the part store and I'm just going to ground this right out to the frame. So all this is doing is just substituting uh, the grounding it to the spark plug. All right, we're going to hold this up here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do um, just to save from having to put all the covers and stuff back on. I'm just going to spin this over with a drill. 
but I am going to have to lock the handle down up on the handlebar because I have to release the brake to make it turn over easy. So with the spark plug out, there's no compression on the engine. It should turn over very easy once that brake is removed. And now we are going to see if it fires. Nothing. You should see a, a bright orange light right here and we do not have any spark at all. That tells us that our coil is the problem, not this ground wire. So what we're gonna do is take a 5 16 I do not advise tightening these with uh, an impact like this. Tighten them by hand, I'm just using them to remove it and to uh, just take the slack out of the bolts. Pull off the old ignition module. Remember how the wiring, uh, how it was routed. And I have another one. And so we're gonna plug up our ground wire because we're assuming obviously this would be a new one or a good used one. And you need to set the proper, they call it air gap for the coil. And the air gap is the space between the coil and the flywheel. Obviously the flywheel is rotating around and so you have to have proper distance or it's gonna rub. So I'm just gonna take some of the slack out of these bolts. I still want the coil to be able to move back and forth like this. And the specs for most Briggs is anywhere from six thousandths of an inch to sixteen thousandths of an inch. I'll tell you what you can do without getting too carried away in the details. A feeler gauge is going to be the most accurate way. And I usually use that for my riding mowers and stuff. But most push mowers, if not all push mowers that I've done, the business card has always worked. Slip a business card. This business card is roughly 14,000, so it's on the bigger side. Slip it in, and what we're gonna do is rotate the flywheel until the magnets come around, and the magnets are gonna suck the coil up tight to the flywheel with the card in, in between. So, there it is. Get a little bit more centered on there, there we go. All right, that's almost like spring-loaded because the magnets are behind it. And from there, we're just gonna hand tighten it up and not too tight, these things strip out really easy. Just good and snug, grab the card and rotate it out. Make sure there is no rubbing of the flywheel and we're ready to retest. So we're gonna hook our spark plug light back up. I'm still leaving the spark plug out. That's just the safest way to, let's go ahead and route this back through the way it was. It's safest to leave that spark plug out so we don't have any uh, accidental starting. All right, spinner over here. I still, I still have my uh, bail handle up on the handlebar squeezed and that's leaving the brake off. Um, now that we have the ground wire hooked up, that's actually disconnecting this ground wire just like it would if you're trying to start the machine. But because the spark plug is removed, it's not going to start. There you go. And you can see we now have spark. So that's it. Go ahead and let's put the covers back on. Put everything back on, bolt it up, you're ready to go. All right guys, once you get all your covers buttoned back up, don't forget to put your spark plug back in. Go ahead and gap it while you got it out, 30 thousandths of an inch for these Briggs and uh, put it back in and test it out, see if that works. All right, so just to recap, if you disconnected the ground wire from the coil and the coil still didn't have fire, you can check the magnets on the flywheel, but 99% the coil is bad. If you disconnected the ground uh, wire from the coil and now the coil is firing, the problem is with the ground wire or the brake assembly system. Somehow that brake is not releasing um, and getting off of the ground wire. It's still grounding it out somehow. Or the wire has, has chafed against the engine somewhere and is shorting out against the engine, which is actually grounding out the ignition coil. So you need to check with that wire or the brake system. So anyways, I'm Josh with Metal in Motion. I hope that helped you guys. Again, if there's something I forgot, if there's an easier way of doing it, let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you guys next time.